Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. So I don't know if both of those bees went back to home. I home. don't think so. I only saw my one. I never saw a second one come I, over here. I, I don't know where the second one went. <laughs> yeah, so I, 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 same thing. I'm waiting. Like now that the sun's coming up, I'm waiting to see what what happens. Oh, um, I want to get a, I want to get another beehive and see. But why do we have a block floating way up? Okay, one just came out. Weird. Just the one. Yeah. Yeah, the other guy just—he's gone. Yeah, I think so. Actually, he gone. So, uh, have you ever gone to a place? And I don't know how often that you would um, do it because it's more no, more normally at like a work cafeteria than it would be like a public cafeteria that you might go to. So I don't know. You ever been to a place where they you can make a, a custom salad? Yeah. But you don't make it. Somebody behind the thing does yeah. based on what you tell them to put on it. Yeah. Okay. So we have one of those at my work. And it's a pretty good deal. Like they got, you know, all the cool toppings. You can't really go wrong with a really fully loaded salad. You know, you can get just a bunch of good shit on, you know, rice right. and taste good. And they always do the thing at the end with the dressing. And what they'll do is they'll be like, okay, you know, tell me when to stop. And they'll kind of start squirting it on. And you, you know, let them know, you know, oh, stop there, you know, or, or don't. You can ask for it on the side. But they, you know, often just put it over. And I kind of like them to put it over. They don't want to walk out with, like, multiple containers of things. Uh-huh. So I went a couple weeks ago and get a salad there. And I'm a big blue cheese fan. Uh, I know some people might like that. Some people might hate that. But at the end, I was like, okay, and the blue cheese dressing. And she goes, okay, tell me when to stop. And turned over the blue cheese dressing. And I shit you not, like all in one hand squeeze, just was like, <laughs> and just like <laughs> shit tons of dressing immediately. I'm like, like stop. There. And I was, I was like, stop, stop, stop. And she goes, oh, man, you must like a lot of dressing. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like. You literally just said, tell me when to stop. Within a millisecond, it was like a half the bottle on my salad. And I immediately frantically start telling you to stop. And your response to me is that I must like a lot of dressing <laughs> because I to it took me too long to tell you to stop. So I was baffled. And Do like you think you salad. blacked out? <laughs> <laughs> no, well, the salad, it, it, was, it was so much. I couldn't even finish the salad because uh, there was so much dressing on the salad. I bet not. I mean, I, I don't like blue cheese. So that's, I mean. Oh, I, I love blue cheese. But there, if, there was still, there was still, there was too, it was too much. It was too much. Uh, but I figured, okay, whatever. Like, this is, you know, possibly my fault in some way, shape, or form. Like, in my, then maybe I did black out, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, I completely forgot about this and hadn't gotten a salad for a while. And I just got one like two days ago and it was the same lady and it's not the normal lady. It's just other lady though. And it was the same lady. She and I, am I immediately had like recognition of, Oh shit, this is the one that put up, you know, a super amount of dressing on the salad. Uh -huh. So I, I literally was like, you blue cheese dressing. And she's like, okay, tell me when. And she literally slowly turned the bottle over. I was like, oh, this is going to be perfect. And I was about to say stop before she even started pouring just to make sure, like, we didn't run into this, uh -huh. you know, this issue. And it was like the teeniest couple drops coming out as slow as molasses. Like, and I was like, oh, my God, maybe somebody must have yelled at her. And like, this is gonna yeah. be like, this is what she does now because she doesn't want to do too much. And after like one, two, three, four, <laughs> squeeze. <laughs> like, <laughs> salad again and i was just like stop and this time she didn't make any comments about like how much how much dressing i like or whatever but i could see the smirk in her face like I she's doing this shit on purpose i think she's doing the shit on purpose wow. and and and, and I, so i've worked multiple restaurants fast food the other and everybody every job has a pet peeve that somebody just like can't stand. Like I remember I dated this girl who worked at an Outback steakhouse when I was in like college. And I remember her distinctly saying like that it was one the biggest pet peeve of hers just because it happened all the time. And she was a hostess. So somebody would come up and make the, you know put their name on the waiting list and you'd give them that little buzzy thing uh -huh. that's supposed to, uh, you know, it buzzes when your table is ready or whatever. And she'd be like, okay, whenever, you know, your your device buzzes and right when you turn it on and program it, it would buzz to show that it's like programmed. Oh, and they're like, oh, I'm ready, huh? Every, she said every single person would be like, oh, so my table's ready now? And they would like hand it back with like this, you know, this smirky type of, yeah. type of joke. So like every industry has their own like pet peeves that happen from the 
from the workers' perspective who complain about the customers. But I never thought about the fact that you think that professions, like in general, like a lot of people who work, have their little quirky thing that they do just because they feel like empowered by it in their <laughs> Probably. job. Probably, I'm sure that there's tons of stuff like that, like people that stock things a certain way or do this or that or the other just to like because they get off on the inconvenience or you know whatever. Like I hate my job, so I'll just spread a little bit of hate around as I work, sort of thing. I could totally see that. Because I do know, like, working in the emergency department, I will tell you that some of my, like, my some of my standard old pet peeves that I would have against people is just when I was working the, the midnight shift, like the overnights, especially on like a Friday night, and somebody who completely able-bodied looking would walk in there and you'd be like, so what's, what brings you into the emergency department today? And it's like, oh, my ah, arm hurts. Oh, my God. I made a what, mistake. What, what, where, where were you at? Did you hit the B? I... They they were the the beehive was full of it was full so I I I dipped I got some bottle of honey and they messed me up. Oh, they don't like it when you steal their honey. I guess not. Oh well, can't you just eat drink it? I guess I could have, and it would have cured the, the poison. poison. Yeah. So are they going to be like angry at you forever? Now? I don't know. He came out of their red eyes and stung the shit out of me. Uh, let's see if they're. Is he still got red oh, eyes? Still, he still got red eyes. Is he going to be mad at me? That's what I wonder though. Is he mad at all humans? Oh, he doesn't have red eyes anymore. Turned oh. away. It must be a timer. Uh, he had red eyes when I came up to him, though. I saw it. I think we so only have one you, bee now. Did you shear his honey? No, I think shears give you honeycomb. Oh, I think that's you, if you do it on the hive and it breaks the hive, doesn't it? Oh, I don't know. I want to get another <laughs> hive before I experiment more. I've been trying. It just ain't happening. Oh, but when the people would come into the emergency room and like, you know, tell me at three o'clock in the morning, like, what do you hear? Oh, my, my, my arm hurts. <laughs> well, what, like, what about it made you come in today? And like right now, like, or like, how long is your arm? Oh, three months. Well, what made you come in about it? Like today, like now, what is different now? Oh, nothing. Just had some time. Like, that's one of my big pet peeves <sighs> that people would do, like from a from that perspective it's just like come to the emergency department because you have time yeah at three o'clock in the morning on a friday night like that drove me nuts with the people who walk in and immediately ask for um uh for for a boxed lunch you know when they're there with abdominal pain but those aren't nearly as as like that's people that can't afford food right like the mm. Bach lunch people, that's just a lot like, of, yeah, sure. A lot of homeless people. Yeah. Oh, I can give a, a better example though of this when I worked at a bingo hall. And whenever I'd work the bingo, the ball caller area, and you'd have people that would walk by and the same fucking joke. Everybody would be like, make sure that N free space is in there for me. Like <laughs> you know, constantly like you'd get you'd get those jokes, but I've just never really thought about as somebody who's worked so many food things, I've never had that quirk that I purposely tried to do because I felt like. like this is the one thing she's got going for, for her, basically. Well, and, and and I'm trying, and I don't want to really be like this person, like really just this is it. But it's, she did it twice, and she did it like almost like led me on the second time, knowing I was like onto her from the time it happened before. Like I'm pretty sure she did that shit on purpose. I think with her, you're going to have to ask for that shit on the side. It's possible. I'm going to have to, like, remember that when I go up there. That ah, This is the one. Put it on the side. My luck, she's going to be like, oh, sorry, we can't do that. <laughs> like, there's going to be some excuse. Yeah. Like, We're out of oh, side cups today. Like, you know, it's funny. They they started getting rid of um, the little – they used to have condiments, like, that you could go get at the condiment bar for – fucking everything like they'd have like the little packets of mayonnaise relish mustard uh tartar sauce like they had everything you could want just up there for grabs on the uh on the condiment guy, uh -huh. which was fantastic now they've changed it and i understand changing something like that because it costs a lot of money for them they didn't take away the options but they put them all in bulk pump containers uh -huh. so it's like the big bulk you know mustard thing and, and right. they have little containers that you can fill them up with put the lid on but you know what they got rid of is what? ketchup packets at all 
They have some packets of things still of the lesser used stuff, which I find a little shocking. Like they have start tartar sauce in the packet. I'm sure it's because they don't want to put tartar sauce in like a big right. bulk container. But ketchup being like the most common condiment, there's no way to get a hold of a packet of ketchup anymore. You have to pump. Well, I mean, the most common one that makes the most sense to me. Uh, Well, except for it's also the one that I'm going to, if I walk out of there with a, I'm walking, so the the cafeteria is not a place, well, I guess some people do, and you go sit down in the cafeteria and eat there, but a lot of people who work at the hospital, you transport your food back to your, you know, unit or your office or whatever, and that's where you eat at? Right. So I need the convenience of being able to throw them in my pocket and walk. As opposed to having like this. Was it your other... food like in a tray or something? Not on a tray. Not on a tray, in a tray. Like a like a like... Yeah, but sometimes the tray's full. I don't have room to put that stuff. You don't in have there. a room for a little cup of ketchup. Well, well, and sometimes I'll just be walking with like a little thing of fries in one of those uh, boats, those little, little cardboard uh, boats. Yeah, just throw the little thing of ketchup on top. Oh, I'm balancing it all down the hallway. I'm usually got my I feel like this is a first world problem. A, a this computer I... in one hand and like a, a Stop a bringing your computer with you to lunch. <laughs> Because I'm coming from meetings. Mm. Dude, you know, people people actually work in the real world, dude. You know, well, got, yeah, but you, you get it. Yeah, well, people also get a lunch break, Jeff. To sit down in the cafeteria and have a lunch. Socialize. Well, yeah, yeah, well, I, I would if, you know, I didn't have too much work to do. I mean, if you're not if you're not allowed to have a lunch break, then, like, which time you call, you got to get It's not that I'm not allowed to have a lunch break. It's just I got, you know, priorities. I'd rather get my shit done so I can leave as opposed to like just sitting down and dicking around for, you know, an hour thing. Man, most uh, people with two kids at home, they get as much time away as they can. Well, so sometimes I have to get home because I'm t- making sure I pick up the kids from the, you know, the sitter. <laughs> right. <laughs> Whatnot. So you got, you got that going as well. I mean, I'm sure you've had some crazy stories working at, you know, uh, uh, the, whatever the shit what buffet did you work at shoney's shoney's that's yeah. it shoney's. I, I mean i here's the thing i did as an employee of shoney's me and the other people that me and like my best friend i got him a job there too doing the same thing and we would be together on like the uh the busy nights uh like normally we like alternate our schedule was alternate so like if i was working he wasn't and vice versa but on like the seafood buffet night we both work <laughs> and at the time i didn't know he was gay so like <laughs> We'd be sitting there, and we'd be in so the. So we'd bar. be making out. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I didn't know it was gay. I thought you know we're just two, two bros it didn't kissing. Mean nothing. Cause they're, cause they're like, hey. <laughs> but uh, we'd be like in the buffet, like inside the like employee area to go like when you like go to refill stuff, like the you know what I mean, like because it's like a it's a U shape. The the Shoney's buffet was, and okay. so the inside oh, of the U inside of it. Right, like, not in the back room, like still visible. Oh yeah, yeah, like right there, like the like the distance from me to like the customer is like a foot and a half, basically. Right, and I'd be right. standing there, and on the other side of this glass is some girl getting her food, and I'd be like, "Man, cute. she's cute." <laughs> <laughs> and like, think she can't hear. Right, right. And, he, and like after like a year of this, he finally was like, "You know that glass isn't soundproof, right? Like, there's nothing preventing <laughs> them from hearing everything you're saying." Um, so yeah, like I probably stood there and embarrassed like teenage girls for like years, basically. Cause I was just sitting there like me and my high school buddy were just look at that girl. And then he, I mean, meanwhile, he's probably bored out of his mind. Like, no, look at that guy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, did, it, did it ever have a girl come up and be no, like, no, nothing ever happened. Out, like out of nowhere. Damn, like where where'd that come from? Like not realizing that. Yeah. No, I mean, and no one ever was like, Yeah, I am, or no one was ever like, fire him or anything like that. Like, no, that ever happened. Though, man, one time, oh my God, this is this is the cringiest and most embarrassing thing. So uh there was this girl and like I said something to her, and she's like, I'm here with my mom and dad. And I was like, Is your dad gonna mind? And she's like, Probably. And like, <laughs> probably. And so when they go to check out, I walk right up to him and I'm like, hey, I think your daughter's really pretty. I'd like to date her. And he just looked at me like I was a complete piece of shit. Like he did not respond to me. He didn't say anything. He just looked at me with disgust and they paid and left. And there was no tip. Was I mean, so I wasn't, a, I don't get tipped. I'm just a guy filling up the salad. Um, but uh, they probably never came back to Shoney's. Uh, 
Yeah, I just like straight up just went up to this dad and like it was the 1800s or something. Like I'm gonna give you a pig for your daughter. Um, <laughs> that's pretty ballsy. Gotta got admit that. Yeah, no, I, I, that was not my standard. I don't know what came over me that day, but I was definitely I had more charisma than than or something. Maybe charisma is not the right word, but more balls than normal. That's for sure. I thought there was more bone. There's three. I do remember God, there was this girl that I used to work with at this uh, an ice cream a, a pizza shop and an ice cream shop all in one. And she did the ice cream counter, and I I made the pizzas. And it was a girl that I was in my high school. Oh my God, I remember my high school was so small. It was um. Oh, I'm trying to get how'd you get honey? I'm trying to get honey from this beehive. I can... It's got to be dripping. Oh shit. It yeah, I saw it dripping, and so that's why I went up and with, with them. no bees anymore. <laughs> it ain't gonna be dripping. Would that one not come back? I don't. I haven't seen him. Well, I know the one didn't come back, but I mean, yeah, the, the one from the the before times didn't come back. The, the one that you got times. all mad. I yeah. haven't seen him. Huh. Um, but this girl, like, and I known her from school, and I talked to her a little bit in school, and my buddy and I always thought super cute. And all of a sudden, I got the job at this uh, at this place as the pizza guy. And uh, she was the ice cream girl, and uh, we ended up being like becoming pretty good friends. And went on a, I took her on a date one night, and I was like all proud of myself because I was in like eleventh, early, early junior year. She was a sophomore, so she was a year younger. And I was just like, damn, like I got, like this is the first date I'm getting with this like you know pretty cute girl that I've been after because I didn't I didn't date much in high school. I didn't I don't don't think I went on my first date. She was probably not my first date, but like real close to my first date ever, mm-hmm. and. Uh, I we went out to a movie, came back and nothing happened. Of course, I didn't make any move and nothing ever went like went on with it. Um, we stayed good friends or anything. Like nothing bad happened with it. But I went back to drop her off at her house, and her dad was there. And her dad was a really funny guy. Like, and I I know this not like I only met him like twice. Once was this day. The first time I met him was this day. But just looking back, and now I know he was a funny guy, and I just didn't like realize it at the time. Uh-huh. And he was like, wanted me to come inside and meet him. And it was like, I was just planning on dropping her off. And she was like, no, my dad wants you to come inside uh, and uh, and meet him. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, like, I'll go inside and meet, meet your dad. This is kind of interesting. So he's just talking to me and talking to me and talking to me about like what it, what it would mean to date his daughter and how the da- his daughter like being like the dad like yeah. literally like you know my daughter's very special to me and blah 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 you have to make sure you treat her right this that the other and I remember it getting to the point where I looked at my watch or I don't even know if I had a, a watch at the time or like looked at their clock on the you know the thing and I was like you know. I live 10 minutes from here and my curfew is in 10 minutes. Like I have to be home in 10 minutes. So I have to like leave at this very moment. And he pulls out a phone because like they have cordless phones at the time, you know, not a cell phone or anything like that. He pulled out a phone and handed it to me and he goes, just call your parents and let them know that we're having a conversation. As long as you let them know, I'm sure that they will be like very appreciative. And especially that it's like, because you're talking to, uh, to me and I'll verify that you're talking to it. You know, it's like Kate's, I don't remember what her name was, but Kate's father or whatever, like, uh, They'll probably respect you for, uh, you know, having a conversation with me. And I was like, how the fuck do I get out of having a conversation? <laughs> right. Now you're like, like uh, I shit. Don't I don't know what I'm supposed to do right now. He's giving me all these reasons to call my parents. And they probably would be, like, really proud that I'm, like, you know, talking to, the, you know, the, the girl's, like, father and all this stuff. Right. And I just out of nowhere was like, sir, I, you know, I, as much as, you know, you understand about how dating your daughter is a very, very important thing. And I like to keep my promises to people like you, including, but I want to keep my promises to people like you that I would treat your daughter with respect, but also to my parents who have put a curfew on me and I want to make sure I always do the right thing by them. And I do <laughs> not break those boundaries of, of the curfew. And like, it like came out, like I blacked out and like said like the perfect yeah. statement, like all out of nowhere. And he literally like put the phone back on the hook and he goes, you bring up a very excellent point. Go on now. <laughs> and he like, he like <laughs> let, me, let me leave. And I was just like, uh, and it's funny because we went on like one date or something like that afterwards, but it was never anything like serious. I think we, her and I made that whole scenario more of a joke because at one point she was in the room. He asked her to leave. 
wow. to go sit in the other room while like we had a talk. It was almost like men are talking, daughter, you know, Jesus. Type, type of deal. And uh, she came walking back in like five minutes later, trying to get me out of whatever situation was happening, like trying to like be like, hey, you, Dad, I'm sure no, she was I, mortified. It's, like it's, she... time, it's time to let him go and all. And he was like, no, 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 no. we're still talking here. And I was like, fuck, <laughs> like, what do I do here? But like now I know looking back on it, I'm pretty sure a lot of what he was doing was some seriousness with some let's see how this kid reacts yeah <laughs> you know? let's just fuck with this kid a little while right right i won't get to have that opportunity see you're gonna get to have that opportunity i'm not gonna get to have that opportunity as much. i mean i'll say i guess if kids turn out gay i could have that opportunity yeah. but it doesn't work as well with the you you're the father of the child or the son dating a woman it doesn't work out the same way right yeah i mean it could i don't know it depends on who your son ends up with too like i mean you're gonna have i mean who knows like any any you know it's i feel like it's it's scary both ways because like i mean of course i would be scared of my daughter getting pregnant and those sort of things or getting with the wrong guy that's gonna get her wrapped up in something that i mean you make you make poor choices whenever you're younger or you know yeah i still think it's crazy that people constantly say how much easier it is to have boys because you don't have to worry about them well yeah i mean it's so much easier for a boy to go out and get like i mean what ha what happens yeah, whenever yeah, I could get six like women show up at your house exactly, all pregnant exactly you have one daughter she could get pregnant one at a time well maybe twins <laughs> or something like that but right you know my, my son could come home and say oh, i got six different chicks pregnant right now you yeah know? <laughs> right that's way more terrifying oh shit um, so i mean i feel like it's terrifying either way like and i, and I think it's just terrifying because i remember being that age and making poor life choices and everyone's gonna do it and i feel like the more you yeah, try to it's, steer... almost, it's almost luck of the draw if it's a life it's a, a life altering choice or not. right right i mean a life altering you, mistake. yeah yeah like you could accidentally ruin your life at that age and not without you know and there's nothing you can do about it like it's well done fucked up now yep <clears throat> um nope, completely agree so you know i mean there's several things i did that it's just lucky they turned out the way they did because it could have been you know <laughs> i don't know done done stupid things but luck i didn't ever kill anyone on accident or something like that i mean it's just the number of things like getting to a rack and you know manslaughter those sort of things like mm -hmm. absolutely i've definitely uh gotten my should not have gotten behind the wheel of a car I've at least never gotten out of the car yeah. drunk, but I used to smoke tons of pot. And I know that that's not the same type of impairment, but like, I mean, shit, like in this day and age, like I've, you know, I've had some pot at legal states within the last couple of years and I was so damn stoned. I don't think I could have drove a damn tricycle, like, you know, a hot wheel. <laughs> like, so like, I feel like, I don't know if weed is stronger now or I just haven't smoked in so long or whatever. But like, and with it becoming, you know, more prevalently available with recreational weed and all that, like, I feel like, I, I feel like by doing that, it's less enticing to children, but I do feel like if they want to get some pot, it's probably easier now than it used to be when we were kids. Well, that, well it's easier now, you're sure, because it's legal. <laughs> Right, I but mean, in certain areas. I, but oh, you mean for kid kids? Well, no, I mean like everything I've read about the studies say that like in places like Colorado, like recreational use for like high school kids have gone way down um, because something about the legalization of it made it less cool to do. Like, so they're like not they're like, oh, well, whatever. When I turn twenty one, I can get it, sort of thing. Kind of like with alcohol, like not every kid goes out and tries to drink before they're twenty one. Um, so from what I've read, high school students are smoking much less weed now than they used to before it was legal. Um, so in I the wonder States why vaping picked up so much since it was legal. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I think that I really think the reason why vaping is a thing is two, two reasons. Um, I think it's this, you got the same, well, a couple reasons, uh, couple is still two anyways you uh <laughs> you, you i think you, it's for two reasons no no no, no a couple of reasons. <laughs> right no, uh, no no maybe slightly more than one reason <laughs> so i think that you still have the same maybe like, three quarters of a bag of reasons <laughs> not a full bag <laughs> uh i used to have the same peer pressure of it being cool but i think the flavored uh vapes have added to the the the, the attractability to younger people um just because it's like so flavored weed that's the next thing it could be um i mean well those thc vapes the ones that actually were causing people to die because of whatever that chemical was that was causing Vitamin lung failure e. um 
I guess those were flavored. <laughs> so there were flavored weed vapes at one point. Um, Wait, they were flavored? I mean, yeah, you could get them flavored just like you can the, get like the THC ones were flavored. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't, I didn't realize that the ones in the that were causing the flavored THC vape. Well, I mean, not necessarily. I don't necessarily say that those were, but I'm just saying that like they, 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 they also made those as flavored ones. Is all I'm saying. Yeah. Like just like your tobacco or your nicotine ones are flavored. Um, there are some of the THC's ones. Were well, I guess what's flavored. what's considered yeah, because you well, sure. I mean, the thing is, like, you know, when I was you know. When I was heavy into my vaping, I was doing nicotine, or excuse me, nicotine. Uh, uh, nicotine, yes, but it was uh, menthol ones. I theoretically, I guess that's considered a flavor, right? It's just not a yeah I think. It's not an enticing, juicy flavor, right? So you never did the like pineapple or like gummy no. candy ones or whatever the hell. No, because I, I feel like those had. are more enticing to kids too. Well, because you gotta also remember, I did it not because it was a cool thing to do. I did it as a as a means of right quitting smoking. And is what my intention was. I think the third reason why it's become more prevalent is because they perceive it to be safe. Like there is not a health okay. risk with this. Bye bye, Andrew. Um Okay, I, I agree with you there because I def- stipulation that it must clearly it was not necessarily safe, but safer than smoking. Right. And that may or may not be true. There's just no studies to tell you. Right. Um, so yeah, those are my three reasons: peer pressure, it tastes good, and uh, it's perceived as to be safe uh, compared to smoking cigarettes. Um, yeah, because I, I feel uh, like we did a good job as humanity to make cigarettes gross. Like we really oh, yeah, made them unattractive. It, I think it, there's a huge stigma about it now. I, did I tell you? Uh, I went uh, out with a whole group of people, and one of the guys that happened to be there, people that used to work with my wife. Um, his, his his wife worked at I don't know what the campaign was called, uh, but the the big quit smoking campaign company um, that have been getting funding from the government for years for to make the campaign of stopping smoking, uh-huh. and they actually recently had some issue where they're basically a lot of them are losing their job because. They've been so successful, a lot of that funding is going away uh, because there's so much less of a push for as much funding as they were getting before because right. the campaigns that they run have been so successful that there's such a stigma against smoking. And I, I was joking around with them. I was like, it's going to be so funny now because your quit smoking campaign people are going to have to have campaigns to get people to start smoking so that they can get government grants to, again, start the quit smoking <laughs> campaigns like to keep their jobs, you know, yeah, like, as a joke, clearly. But, you know, sadly somebody out there might actually think like that it's like the, you got, those cigarette companies have to be trying to in their own why like in their own mind philip morris has to be like how do we get people smoking so we can stay in business you know right. it's got to be their business model because- well you know i've read some studies that said that the, the cigarette companies have made attempts to make cigarettes less deadly so that you live at least longer to continue smoking longer so increase that profit margin right right it makes, it makes sense i mean and alcohol People can say alcohol kills, but in a way than, you know, cigarettes, but still alco- chronic alcoholism is still a very terrible thing. Cirrhosis of the liver, all that fun stuff, you know, fun, quote unquote. Right. Uh, but there's clearly advertisements for how fun alcohol is. Right. You know, that's not a problem to be able to advertise for. And nobody thinks twice about like, how dare these people decide to advertise alcohol? Yeah, it is a bit weird. I mean, there there have been. Lots of people that make fun of that, I guess, like the whole we're drinking, we're partying, we're cool ads, um, but the, they haven't stopped. It's not like the reform that we had on cigarettes, like we're making them look too cool to kids. Got to stop. I almost done that with alcohol. Yeah. It's just it's, better, uh, better lobbyists, really. <laughs> uh, I did. That's, you know what? That's probably true. Uh, I feel like that's where a lot of the decisions are made by the lobbies it feels like <laughs> i i still remember reading this news article many years ago um by many i mean like 2006 2007 um because i didn't live in dc yet but i was getting prepared to move out to dc and they had just banned smoking outside of uh the capitol building uh-huh. so on the grounds of the capitol or whatever 
And this news article talked, it was talking to one of the senators at the time who <laughs> the statement was as Senator blah, 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 looked longingly at the ashtray. He <laughs> looked at me and mm-hmm. said, so many of the world's decisions were made right there at that ash. <laughs> and it's like, you know what? I, I believe it. Yeah. I believe it. Cause the smoking crowd when I was in college was a fun crowd that went out on the breaks and actually like scheduled the, you know, what bar are we going to after, you know, after class today? And it was the social group. It was where you talked and like people went and talked about random shit so a lot more stuff probably happened just because you bumped into somebody by the ashtray smoking than it did because you were scheduling a meeting with somebody you know i was reading about the rules on the senate floor today today for the impeachment hearing and some of that shit's just crazy to me like they're only allowed water or milk they're not allowed to get it themselves Uh, water or milk yep that's the two beverages that are allowed on the senate floor they're not allowed to leave their seats only the pages can bring it to them um, they're not allowed to have any, uh, here's one that I read that was a little bit weird. They're not allowed to have any electronic devices or anything that has cellular connectivity, but I was watching it some today and I noticed several of them have new Apple watches, which do have cellular connectivity. So I don't know how many of those people just didn't realize it or purposely were like skating by the rules there because it's like something that people don't realize. Um, so there was that, but also like they can't have candy and stuff, but there's one desk that's allowed candy because of lobbyists from Pennsylvania where Hershey is located, that desk is allowed to have candy in it. Um, and so the, every, all the senators can get candy from the Pennsylvania desk, but only from there. That is very strange. Rule. Yes. Yeah. They, they just blows my mind. The kind of like, are we having an impeachment hearing or are we organizing a kindergarten? I mean, also, is there a rule that they're just going to table everything? Oh, well, yeah, that's that's also cool. Yes, yes, it's all – you want a table? We got – it's like Ikea up in there. Um, <laughs> this table's full of motions. Yeah. What are we going to do with them? I just let them sit. Yeah, let them sit there. Table. What else table. are we going to do with them? Um, yeah. No, I feel like <laughs> Schumer could have brought forth a motion to like – to do anything like you know what let's just drop all this and not impeach donald trump uh table let's it ta- let's table it let's table yeah. it <laughs> oh okay all right yeah i don't think it mattered what that man said it was gonna let's be table. make him a king and uh <laughs> that's what we're doing didn't you know yeah i i did apparently like which is uh this whole thing yeah. and, it, and it, it's just so sad it truly is a sham but not for the reasons that trump thinks it's a sham yeah <laughs> for yeah. the exact opposite reasons all right well everybody get out there register to vote you two can change things i guess that's all After i know we got a, a big big thing coming up in november you know i heard that there's some guy that people don't want to be president yeah anymore. i've heard um but we're out of time so i hope you've enjoyed our discussions today and if you can tell us what happened to our beads. Yeah, no, right? I don't know. Oh, you know what? What? Yours died because it stung you. Oh. Yeah. That's true. So so yours did die because it stung you. I don't know what happened to mine. No, we've like made possessiveness of <laughs> no, But yeah, that's the one right, that was they... way over here, he just, I don't, maybe he got in a fight with a, an animal or something. Do they or, do that? Uh, I don't know. I have no idea. But I can't imagine. I guess why. he could have like, gone far enough over there and touched that lava. Oh, that's possible. He could have done that. Huh. Yeah, yours yours died because he stung you though. That is probably Right. That makes sense. And those chickens could die if they had because yep. you just threw them on the lava. <laughs> yep. All right, guys. We'll see you next time. Thanks for All watching. Right. See ya. Bye. <laughs>